Get ready to match the stars from Vegas, Bart Braverman. Danny White. Charles Nelson Riley. From Flo, George Gulawak. From Aloha Paradise, Bill Daly. And Marsha Wallace. As we play in the star studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Roberts. Got a good bunch out there. Uh, what is that design on your tie? That's really pretty. That's, uh... Looks like I think interlocking that's handcuffs or something. Hermes. Isn't that their design? It's stirrups. Does it say... Yeah, that's Hermes. Oh, Hermes. 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 No. Hermes. Right next door to Goosey. No, nah, that's Hermes. A great French saddle maker. That's how they started. Now they do purses oh, and everything. So they make all my purses. You're so learned. You get those at Kmart. They're wonderful. Not Kmart. Pick and save. That's where they come from. Pick a nose. All right, now listen. Uh, she's been up there one day. Uh, you've been up there one day. It's your turn in the barrel. So, oh, I can't wait. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you'd step down this way. See, Brett is out of town doing a play, and uh, so we're taking turns here. Oh, you, you go over there. You don't march, huh? Oh, I've been marching in place. Oh, all right. Over here. I feel like a Vita. You feel like a Vita? I feel like a Vita. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Argentina. All right, are you ready to say hello to uh, Mimi Kennett? Come on down here, Mimi. Now, Mimi, everybody on this stage knows you're a contestant. So, and you've already gotten into the CBS building, so you don't need the CBS pass. I'll just stick it right over here for the moment there. Stick now, she won the game, and that means she's going to have a go at the big money. She uh, started the uh, first part of the super match and won $250. That means the least she will play for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500. But if she spins a wheel and gets lucky, she could double it up and play for $5,000. So, Mimi, step up there and have a go at it, and we'll all root for a double. Here we go. <laughs> $2,500 with Bart Braverman. Just and here we go. Back here, if you would, facing me, please. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Always blank. Always blank. Want to take a look at it? There's the word. Well, he made up his mind very quickly. Yeah, I'll give you a chance to think about it for a second, and then you give me a response, which you think will match him. If you do that, you get $2,500. What do you say? Yours. All right, all right, Bart, what do you say? Well, that's yours. Mine was always remember. Always remember. Uh, always. Could you just die from an answer like that, I had really? Maybe I get a kiss. Oh, I better get your badge. Your badge fell down here because you're supposed to wear it at all times. Listen, it was uh, grand having you up here on the match oh, game, and I'm glad you won $250. And many you. thanks for Mimi Kenneth, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have Colleen Cardoza and Pam Iovino. How do you do, ladies? Welcome. Let's find out who you are and where you're from. Colleen? I'm from San Diego. I was born and raised there. I work for a marketing research company. I'm 20 years old and single. Yes, right. Yes. And a gleam in her eye. <laughs> All right, and Pam, tell us about you, please. Hi, I'm credit manager of an automotive soft goods firm in Los Angeles. I'm married. I have three dogs and a cat. I enjoy football, Las Vegas, and Paul Williams. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, it's too bad Paul is not in. When he's in town, we try and get him for this program, and he's been on a number of times, and uh, we love him, too. All right. Good luck to both of you ladies. We'll begin by asking Colleen to make a decision. B, please. All right. B says, the Hollywood producer said, there's something wrong with the casting in this movie. It's the life story of Minnesota Fats. And in the starring role, they've got blank. <laughs> That's very good. All right, Colleen. The Hollywood producer said, there's something wrong with the casting in this movie. It's the life story of Minnesota Fats. And in the starring role, they've got blank. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker is a skinny fellow. <laughs> Jimmy Walker. Very skinny. On persuasion. I thought perhaps Gregory Peck, tall, skinny, might get it, but... Right. Uh, oh, this right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a jungle up here. It is. No wonder it's aged Brett very premature. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can say all this because she's in St. Louis. Yes. As a repertory with no TV. Yeah, right. Too commercial. Right. Twiggy. Twiggy. That would be very well, incongruous. Thin, yeah. Very incongruous. Thin and also the wrong sex. What do you say? That's what Tarzan said when he came home one day and he said to Jane, please make me two martinis, bad. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> Twiggy. Twiggy. Tarzan said that, eh, Chuck? All right. 
It's a life story of Minnesota fans, the starring role they've got. Tarzan said what? Didn't you hear him? No, I missed it. I was he said to Jane, make me two martinis very quick. It's a jungle oh, out yes, there. I heard that. You did hear it. <laughs> you know why she has. Oh, well, you why did you ask me what he said? I, was, I mean, I didn't hear him say it. I heard it before. Oh. Do you know why? What is she why? talking about? Do you, know what? 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 Do you know why Jane has one bosom that's right and one that hangs down? Her, this side hangs down because he says, me, Tarzan, this, Jane. <laughs> Oh, you are incorrigible. What's your answer? Twiggy. Twiggy, a skinny lady. Well, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Kareem Abdul. Abdul. The tall guy that plays basketball. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Abdul Abdul I don't know how to spell it. I don't know how to spell it. Formerly known as Lou Alcindor. Yes, Lou Alcindor. I couldn't spell that either. All right, what did you say? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right, that's good. I don't want to leave the Congo. Um, just for the diehards out there, can you imagine the letters you're going to get when you said Twiggy is the wrong sex? Twiggy. Twiggy. <laughs> Did I say she was the wrong sex? Yeah, she said she was the wrong She's sex. the wrong sex for Minnesota fats. Because Minnesota <laughs> no. fats... Oh, yeah, but if Mary but... Tyler Moore can play the male part, in whose life is it anyway? I right. mean, it's all in different times. That's, That's right. right. You could rewrite the whole thing, sure. All right, Otto said, you know you've had too much to drink at the party when you try to shave your host's blank. Pam, <laughs> <laughs> Otto said, you know you've had too much to drink at the party when you try to shave your host's blank. Legs? Legs. Legs. Your host's leg. Nothing. Who are you talking to out there? You got a you got a rooting section? No, I'm just trying to oh. get one. Oh, you're trying to get a rooting <laughs> section. Anyone like to root for her? Sure you would. All right, Bart. Said when you tried to shave your host's shih tzu. Ah. Let's say uh, yes, a small, small curly small dog. dog wraps itself right. around your leg. Yes. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah. Oh, a shih tzu. Yes. Good impression. Shih tzu. <laughs> oh, I'm having a wonderful time up here. And uh, I don't know why they didn't like Pam's. I mean, the mother of three dogs and a cat. Yes. Legs. Legs. That's it. All right. I said head. Head. All right. Bring that head over here. You know, if you have too much to drink when you try to shave your host's... Mother. Mother. <laughs> right. She needed a shave. Yes. I had legs, and I threw away rat, rats. Dogs. Dog. Aw. Uh, what are you, a little leg to the lady? No shih tzu, just plain dog. Ah, dog. Okay, one to nothing is score. Well, shall we go on now to round two? And since you're ahead, you have to go first. B. Right. Uh. You got it. Rita said. Rita who? Rita, whoever. Rita Hayworth. Rita said, I'll never go back to that rude clothing salesman again. I asked him to show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the blank. Rita said, I'll never go back to that rude clothing salesman again. I asked him to show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the blank. Are you ready for the answer? <laughs> <laughs> mirror? In yeah, I mirror? guess I'm as ready as I'm going to be, oh, uh, Pam. Mirror. Yeah, mirror. <laughs> what do you got there? I was taught at Carnegie Tech that it is pronounced mirror. Mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Right. You do mean Carnegie. I, I said yeah. Carnegie. Oh, right. I said that. I was told in the ghetto of Hartford that it was Miro. <laughs> <laughs> told me to, I wanted to uh, show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the, what do you say? In Cowtown, we say mirror. 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 The what do you comedy say? duel Stella and Mirror. Remember that? Stella and Mirror, yeah. Oh, you're doing okay, Pam. You got five. Let's see if uh, uh, Betty makes it six. Whatever her name is. Yeah. Yes. Now, well, this is no reflection on you, Mirror. All right. Thank you. Now, Colleen, <laughs> you could tie it with six. Let's see if it happens. Barry said, my wife is the world's worst cook. How worst is she? Can't say how worst is she. That's... You just said That ain't good grammar, you see. She's the world's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. That's how worst she is. World's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. You ready? Barry said, my wife is the world's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. A razor. A razor. 
Got a lot of friends here today, haven't you, Colleen? Yeah, wonderful. She had it left over from the All party right. when she shaved his legs. <laughs> I didn't say razor. What did you say? I said jackhammer. Jackhammer. So that means Pam wins the game. Come on down, Pam. What do you have? Blowtorch, saw, pitchfork, and lawnmower. Oh. I'll get that out of the way. Now, Colleen, you'll be back for round uh, game number two a little bit later, but we'll wheel you off now and uh, see you in a little while. Now, we'll see how much money you're going to win. Good luck to you. You can win over $10,000 here. Pam, we uh, polled the studio audience not too long ago, and we said, write down your best answer to this. Denise Blank. Now, let's see what kind of responses we'll get from our stars. One at a time. Betty? I... Betty. No, no. Betty. That's you want Marsha. You want Marsha. You want Marsha. We all want Marsha. Oh, would that that were true. Denise? Is there a Denise? Is there a... Uh, what was that one from Hit Parade or something? Is that somebody... Denise Darcel? Is Denise, there a Denise Darcel. Darcel? Yeah, there, is, there was an actress named Denise Darcel who was popular 40, 50 years ago. It's all right. I know you remember her. It's all right. There's a lady who does a lot of soap opera shows called Denise Alexander, who's a very nice actress. Yeah. How about Denise and the nephew? Oh! Is that your... Uh, no, no, no. Are you there? No. Denise, anyone? <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Whom did you... Did you call on Charles? I... I Charles, you have one. <laughs> yes, I have one. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, no, he wrote down Bill's answer, Denise and Denefi. No, I had one. You have Denise Alexander already? All right. Oh, yeah. The most popular girl in the class at 48 at Weaver High School, Denise Shapiro. No, that's no good. <laughs> Denise Lore. Denise Lore. They know her. Everybody. Yeah. All right, Denise Lore, Denise Alexander, and Denise Darcel. Denise Alexander. For lack of anything better. For lack of anything better? Well, I mean, How about I mean, venereal Denise, disease? Denise Lohr. <laughs> venereal Denise, I thought that was. Alexander. You really want Alexander? All right, uh, you want Alexander. Let's take well, a look at the $100 response. Be there. Denise ah! DeMenis. Denise DeMenis? Denise DeMenis? <laughs> well. What is that? There's nothing. That's right up there with East Side oh, Story. No, now here's what happened. Well, we pass out Denise, the papers the to the audience. Better. I think we better it's, get going. It's all they saw. No one pronounced it for them. They just have a piece of name. paper, D-E-N-I-S-E, -E, and many of them looked at it and said, oh, Dennis, what are we going to write here? Martha, what are we going to write? We're going to write Dennis to Menace? That's what we're going to write, and that's what they wrote. All right. Let's see what the next one is going to say now. Ah! So the same something. guy says, Mark, what are you going to write for the next yeah. one? She says, right, right Denise that. and the nephew. And that's how that Maybe happened. Maybe Denise is up there next. <laughs> oh, well, I hesitate no to reveal the $500 response. Yeah. I don't know what's going to be up there. Well, slide it anyway. Who is, Who is he? It's the elevator operator. The guy Who's like Dennis Williams? It's, you know a, it's a singer. It's a girl. Oh, Denise Williams, a that's singer. That's all a joke, that whole board, right? Right. Wow. Let's start all over again. That was a Weren't you board. lucky to be here on this day? Well, Denise and we've got a little commercial. Fortunately, you have game number two. Current leader. All right, here we go. With Colleen back again. Welcome. And uh, we'll ask you once again to choose A or B. A. A it is. Norm said that politician is a lush. In, uh... Oh. How lush is he? Uh, <laughs> instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. <laughs> Colleen, are you familiar with that? When a phrase enters a, uh, when a politician enters a political race, the, uh, the colloquial phrase is, he threw his hat into the ring. That means he's running for office, for senator or congressman or whatever. So I'll let you read it just to make sure you understand it. You want to read it aloud? Go ahead. Okay. Read out loud. Norm said, that politician is a lush. Instead of his hat, he threw in, he threw blank into the ring. I Got mean, it? <laughs> he threw blank into the ring. Now, Colleen, we'll begin. Norm said that politician is a lush. Instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. His liquor bottle. His liquor bottle. Very good. Simple, straightforward, and direct. Absolutely. Nothing but the upper crust here. He threw up into the ring. Uh huh. All right. I was going to say that, too. 
But you change but your mind. I'm sitting in the woman's seat, a woman of taste, perception, style, class. Who is An that? Age. An age. Right. So I had to pick something a little classier. He threw his pants into the ring. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dropped his pants, threw the pants into the ring. Brett's back His ice cubes. His ice cubes. All right, if he was a lush, he would have a large supply of ice cubes. Thank you. Don't boo Charles. Don't boo Charles. He'll turn on you. Instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. This is terrible. You have a bad one. It's awful. I'm embarrassed. Well, now, wait a minute. If you're that embarrassed, maybe I should take a no, peek at it first. No, you can't look at it. I'll say it. He kissed his bottle. He kissed his bottle and threw a baby into the ring. What would that have to do with being a lush? They always kiss, they always kiss babies. Oh. He kissed the bottle and threw the baby in the ring. Oh, I see. All right, I understand. It's very logical. Very, very logical. Okay, Bill. No? Well, he kissed the baby and threw the bottle of booze in the ring. Yeah. Booze bottle. An empty bottle, that is, you know. An empty right. bottle. That's one for her. No. Cork. A cork. That's close. Part of a bottle. So one for her, and now, Pam, we have this one for you, which says, Nerdo Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. It's... You're a mob. You're an anarchistic mob, totally disorganized, without a leader. You are not in concert at all. And that makes you happy, doesn't it? <laughs> Nerdo Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. They're fired. <laughs> Instead of performing Madame Butterfly, they're performing Madame Blank. <laughs> All right, now. I'm ready now. Nerda Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. Instead of performing Madame Butterfly, they're performing Madame Blank. Worm. Worm. All right. Worm. Madam Worm. What do you say, Bart? I would have said that, but you rushed me. What'd you say? Madam you. Madam Beetle. Madam Beetle. Beetle. I love my answer. You're going to hate it in droves. You're going to hate it. I love it. Is it the First, worst? Brett Summers testimonial <laughs> baddie. Oh, thank you. Go. Thank you. I did it for you, Brett. Madam and Waylon. Madam and Waylon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nothing wrong with that. Madam Roach. Madam Roach. <laughs> That's good. Instead of Madam Butterfly, they're performing Madam... Madam Moth. Madam Moth. Okay. What do you got, Bill? I got a raunchy one in uh, Madam Horsefly. That's a Madam good one. Horsefly. Well, little raunchy there. She wants a worm. Should have been Madam Margarine Fly. Yeah, right. Uh, Madam Moth. Madam Moth. So it's one and nothing at the end of round one. Now this message. For the next commercial. Gene Rebernier, join us next time for the match game. Thank you all. Goodbye.